So my father, like a lot of other Chinese Americans, was a paper son. His uncle, my great uncle, didn't have any children of his own. And so he wrote my dad a letter and he said, young man, how would you like to come to America? Because we have a paper available, meaning a paper identity. And just like other immigrants around that time, from China or from Europe, they come because of a, a tremendous uh, economic hardships. There was not enough food to feed the population. My father came through Ellis Island. Uh, everyone gets interviewed, so if you don't speak English or you can't answer those questions, many people are rejected and sent home. They all have to memorize before for the interview. So they actually like practice, 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 so they don't, you know, they won't get caught. They would interrogate them. And the first question they ask him is, do you need the services of a translator? And he says, yes, I do. And that is the last true thing he says. <laughs> because from that point on, he is the son of an already existing American citizen. And the tragedy is that many people commit suicide. It's very difficult because when you come as a child, you see this. So I actually went to a nur uh, nursing home where my father was yesterday, and I've never seen him cry, and he started choking up. So that was hard. What was he remembering? I think just the pain of, you know, so long ago. My, my great-grandfather, who was born in 1880, he came over uh, to the United States. He started, uh, you know, working, uh, you know, uh, in, in the laundry business, but, you know, he was about to be deported. And then during the, um, the uh, San Francisco earthquake, people got, um, you know, someone to swear or testify that uh, this individual was born in the United States. Uh, he's looking for the new records that were, have been destroyed in the earthquake, so that's how uh, my great-grandfather got to stay in the United States. Well, my, my father actually never got his paperwork. We used to come to Chinatown on Sundays, like most Chinese families did, to shop for their groceries. And occasionally, they would block Chinatown for immigration. And my dad would say, hey, I'm not going home tonight. And so just head to the subway, and he'd give me the groceries. And I'd hop on the train and go home, and he'd stay in Chinatown. I mean, he, many a night, we had to wonder how come he hasn't come home. A lot of cases, you know, uh, Chinese fathers, you know, only tell you on a need-to-know basis, okay? Uh, if they don't think they, uh, you need to know, they won't say anything. And I think that had a lot to do with the Chinese exclusion laws. As a child, I don't know, and they don't tell us. They, we don't know what racism is when we're five, six, or seven. They don't talk about it. Chinese Exclusion Act wasn't in the textbooks. I started asking some more questions as an adult to my dad, and, um, it's not easy to open up about these things. So now that I get older and, and I'm learning, I, I have much more appreciation for them, for what they endured. I, I think back constantly to what my uh, great-grandfather went through. It, it's directly relevant to what's going on you know, right now with uh, you know, some of the immigration policies. If not for you know, some of the illegal uh, immigration activity that my uh, ancestors uh, engaged in, you know, I wouldn't be here, you know, my, my children uh, wouldn't be here, and you know, we're, we're functioning uh, members of society. I went to China for my first time in 1979, and we get to Hong Kong, and I go to look at the border crossing. And I remember go going to the border crossing, and I was crying. I'm saying, gee, on the other side of that border crossing is where my dad came from. Being the first um, descendant from New York to go uh, to Toysan, had to do, not had to, but it was a choice, but I felt like I should. Um, that is to go pay my respects to my great-grandfather. I had the pleasure, I have to say the pleasure, of doing my route strip, I got a chance to see Toy San. The way my parents saw it and the ancestors, it, things didn't change too much from century to century. I think everybody has an origin story and everybody goes back to the origin to kind of find some grounding. Um, I think they did a lot for us in terms of trying to make it in America. It's not an unusual story. It is a story shared by tens of thousands of other Chinese Americans and specifically Toy Chinese Americans. Like many of the folks who came during those times, they dedicated their lives, they made many sacrifices so that the next generation can plateau to the next level. He made life-changing decisions on this thing, worded it on his, on his tombstone. Loving father, carrying this. I put down pioneer because in my eyes in my family's eyes he was a pioneer. I think um, you're fortunate to kind of 
have this opportunity to create, you know, have that life and create a new story. Um, yeah. I think uh, the stories need to be told because it's history and uh, it has to be passed on to the next generation. It cannot be just wiped out of history. Every person's or every culture's uh, stories are important, I believe.